What's up, squad? We back at him again, man, when they thought it was finna end. Thank y'all for riding with me. Well, you know you feel a lot then with your boy stories with V. At this time, family, you already know what I need y'all to do for me. Like, share, comment, smash that subscribe button, y'all. Why? Come on, now. We're on that road to 100K. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you for being here. It's an honor and a pleasure. So listen, sit back, relax. You can take a seat on the bed or cop a squad on the toilet seat. I got the rest of the show from here. To that one and only V squad. They know the motto, man. Listen. It ain't no squad like our squad because they don't mob how we mob. So with that being said, we're going to continue to push, mob, put them numbers up, and dominate 2024. It's our year. If you would like to support the channel through Cash App, boom, it's listed right there. If not, please join the membership, man. Exclusive content over there. You definitely want to get involved. If you would like to come on the show and tell your story or have a story told through V, jump in that comment section right now or DM me on one of my platforms. We would love to have you on. Without further ado, mob, y'all know what time it is. Let's jump into them V, mob. Shout out to the day. Number one on the V, mob. Listen, man, salute the use of links. What it do, family? Number two on that V, mob. Listen, man, salute the Damon Brooks. What it do, mob? Number three on that V Mob list, man. Salute to Dre De Niro with a do family. Number four on that V Mob list, man. Salute to Daquan Ghosting with a do mob. And number five on that V Mob list, man. Salute to Brad B1427. Salute family. Because that's exactly what we all over here, man. A family. Where we come together each and every day, tell an entertaining story, laugh, chill, vibe, take our minds away from whatever we got going on at the time, and try to prevent one person from ever spending one night inside that cell. So without further ado, y'all know what time it is, mob. Gangsta Love, part eight, the finale. Meet me over there, y'all know what time it is. Let's go, boom. Whoa, what's up, squad? You made it. Let's jump into it, man. Part eight, the finale. So now it's bro running down the street at the heat and just got done banging that real little homeboy. He arrives to his house, busts through the front door, breaks upstairs. Soon as he get in his room, he starts checking his body, making sure he ain't been hit. He sits with the edge of the bed with a wave of emotions going through his head. Because now he thinking, man, did I get him? Is he down? He checking himself, making sure he ain't hit. He sits down on the edge of the bed. He immediately think, man, I got to call the guys and let them know what's going on. He picks up the phone and he calls money. Now, let's bounce back to money and Stacy real quick. Now, does everybody know y'all? Stacy and money is ducked off out the hotel. So during this time that they out there, Stacy is trying to convince money. Listen, man, we need to move out of town. We need to start over. I can transfer as a nurse. You can try to get a construction job, a trash man job something or you can just live off the money that we didn't already accumulated it's not a lot but we need to get away from here but neither one of us were meant for this life we were both good people we both come from good homes money it didn't got out of hand so now money sitting right there like what the fuck i'm supposed to do with my homeboys man what i'm just supposed to give up on them and you know my bloodline what i'm supposed to run first sign of danger because money is trying to prove something to himself he's trying to let her know like listen man I started something, I started it. I was just a regular weed boy. Now, the minute that I try to spread my wings and get some more money, I'm not entitled to get no money if I'm not copping from this chump. No, I'm not ready to let nobody run me from my neighborhood and I'm not ready to let nobody treat me less than a man because I'm a man. So now Stacy is trying to tell him like, money, I get it, babe, but we gotta go. It's not worth losing your life about. So now when money here, as, as they're into the conversation, money phone goes off. So he pick up the phone, this is little homeboy. What's going on, bro? Now they get into the conversation, the little homeboy boy let him know that he just got into a shootout with one of real little shooters he don't know if he out of there or not money say man i'm on my way right there now the homeboy say man no stay where you at i don't even want you around here i'm ready to call bro bro and let him know stay put up too it's too hot around here money they got police around here everywhere it done damn near been three shootings in one day stay where you at he say all right bro you stay in the house too i love you bro be on point they say they love each other hang up the phone Soon as the little homeboy hangs up with money, he jumped back on the phone and called the other bro, bro. This is, like I told y'all, it was a click of six, but as things start to get down, you know, people start to dwindle off. So it was only the three people that, when they was all in the house, money, the home, other homeboy that had a gun, and the homeboy who uh, house it was. So now the little homeboy who just got into the shooting with Rel, he calls the other homeboy and he let him know, listen, man, I just got into a bang out with one of Rel little shooters. Don't be outside because they know all three of us hang together. I'm just letting you know so you can be on point. I know you ain't got no gun. You ain't really moving like that, but just stay put up. So the homeboy said, what you mean? I ain't moving like that, man. I'm moving just like everybody else moving. He like, no, nah, bro, I ain't mean to like that. I'm just saying, I know you ain't had no iron. He like, shit, I do got some iron. I just ain't want to grab it. You know, my big brother left that joint behind before he got booked. Now, what is he saying? He letting them know that, listen, I got access to a gun too because... The other homeboy, he had a big brother who was a street figure ripping and running in the street. 
he ends up getting locked up for a robbery. He was a real big jag boy. But before he got booked, he left a gun behind, put up in his little brother closet, which, in the little brother closet, which is their homeboy. So he like, what? What that guy do about your brother? He say, man, he left me something behind too. But all right, I got your message, bro. Love you. He hangs up the phone. So now he's going through this stage the way as though he feel like he ain't putting no work in the crew because money done already banged something off. The other homeboy done banged something off. And now, granted, he feeling like I ain't did nothing yet, but he just as part of the crew as everybody. He just ain't had his time to put on no performance. Now, let's bounce the fat ass girlfriend. Now, during this time, of course, she's going through a wave of emotions. Her boyfriend, fat ass thing, just got laid down. So she's getting the funeral arrangements together. So now as she does that, fat ass funeral is ready to come up. Let's bounce back to Pop real quick. Now, as Pop and the gunman is sitting in the living room after they didn't did the incident that they got into, of course, like I told y'all, to the shooter, this was nothing. He do this on the regular. He been ripping, running in the streets, being a gunman since he was a kid. Money father, he understand him because when he was active in the streets, he was doing the same thing. So after they get done, the little young gunman say, man, you need anything else, OG? He say, no, man, appreciate that, champ. He runs upstairs into his room, grab about $2,000, come down, and he tries to hand it to him. The young gunman say, come on, man, you know that shit was on the house, bro. This was for your son, man. I'm paying homage. So when he does that, he say, I respect that too, but never do a job for free. He hands him the $2,000. They dab each other up. The shooter pulls off. Now, during this time, like I told y'all, man, the neighborhood is so hot and so crazy that the police are everywhere. So everybody is supposed to relocate. Ain't nobody got a shop open because time out is on it hard. Now, let's bounce back to the day of we're fast forwarding guys up into the funeral. So now, come funeral day, girlfriend is getting herself together. She getting up come early morning. It's funeral day. Now, everybody's at the funeral chilling. Everybody done went in there. They done said the prayers. They are out back at the, where they putting them into the ground. So now, as they're putting them into the ground, Rail Lord Shooter, who almost got out of there, he's not right there with the rest of the family. He's ducked off like behind a tree, cooling, just smoking a cigarette, watching from afar, just thinking like, damn, man, both of my men down. Now, he also has to attend Rail Funeral, who hasn't came up yet because Fat ass got hit first. So they go through that funeral now. He just going through a wave of emotions. Now, everything done died down during this time. But let's bounce back to the other homeboy that's in Money and Them Crew. Now, with him, what he's going through is he's going through the want to prove something stage. Because now he feel like what they think they better than me. What they think I'm soft or something because they didn't bang their pistol. I just ain't had my chance to bang it. What they think he talking about I can't get one. I ain't got one. So now he pumping himself up, working himself up. He goes in the closet. He grabbed a gun that his brother left behind him. He got the clip over. He see that it still got a full clip in there. He puts it back in, cock one to the head, and he just sitting right there on the edge of the bed, ready to go to work. Now, let's go back to Money and Stacy. During this time, as they're going through this debate about are they going to move or are they going to stay, Money decides to just give in because during this time, Pop gives him a call. When his father called him, he tell him, listen, Money, it's crazy around here. The neighborhood is in an uproar. Your mother is worried about you because now uh, my Mama money is getting involved into the situation. She don't know exactly everything that's going on because she didn't told the father, I don't want to know money. She ain't even talking to money because she don't want to get involved in this. She can't even picture her baby boy being involved in any shooting, drug dealings or anything of that nature. So she's just staying completely out of it. But her and the father that sat down and had a talk because she's starting to get a little nervous. Like now the father's moving different and she don't want him to go back into them old streetways that he been on. So now Pop sits down and talk to him and tell him on the phone, of course, because money is still at the hotel. He tell him, look, man, you need to change your life or you need to get from around here. This is not for you. This never been you. And I'll be damned if everything me and your mother did for you and every sacrifice we made, I'll be damned if you pull me back to being active in these streets. And you and I'll be damned if you make me have to do a bit and put your mother through coming up there to visit me again or worse, burying you or me. Money say, all right, Pop, man, Stacey's been up here debating on that too. So as they get done having the conversation, so the father say, so what you going to do? Money say, we going to leave. He say, all right, that's a bad love you. We going to talk more about it later. Hangs up the phone. Boom, as they hang up the phone, Stacey say, so what we going to do? Are we going to do it? Money say, you heard what I just told them. They say, all right, they sit right there, hug while both of them drop a tear. Now, Stacey is crying because she's... She's in a happy state of mind because she like, all right, whatever she be going through with her family, that's that. But now she love money so much. She don't, she didn't, she never wanted this to get this far out of hand. Her giving money that idea when she told him to be a big dub, she never in a million years imagined that it would get to this point. The way as though she got a fear of money going to jail for doing something 
or him losing his life and her never seeing him again. Money crime because it's like, damn, all I wanted to do was just sell a little weed, make a little money, and get some of the things that I wanted in life. I had everything I needed, but it was just a couple little things that I wanted in life. He never seen it getting this far. Let's bounce back to money homeboy. As he's sitting right down the edge of the beat, he just thinking like, God damn, all this shit, man. I mean, I would, if, if I would have known it would have ended up like all this, I just would have stayed working with fat ass on his block because money, my man, I love him to death, but it was cool when I was just doing this. Money was the weed, man. We just had our little team and it was all good. Now you got that third homeboy who's sitting on the edge of his bed with a loaded gun in his hand thinking, I need to put some work in. I need to put my name out there because the guys think that I'm not thoroughbred. Now you got mama money and papa money. They sitting in the house talking to each other, consoling each other, thinking, did we do a good job with our son? How did money end up out here doing this? So now, fast forward to the last event where they're having a the funeral for Ralph. So when it comes to Ralph funeral, everybody attend from the block. They go through the same thing, have the ceremony inside. Now, when they come outside to put the body in the ground, the Lord Shooter, who was his inspiration, who he is, so he go right there, say his last goodbyes to his homeboy, and he walks off to one of his favorite little spots. He just chill up under the tree and watch over, the, watch over everybody while the funeral is going on. So now, as this is happening, that morning of the funeral, money, little homeboy, up early that morning to go to Ralph funeral too. Now, when he going to the funeral, he don't got no good intentions on his mind. So when he arrived at the funeral, it's like a it's like a main street when you go through the funeral home. He pulls onto the main street of the funeral home. He looks to his left. He can see that that's real little ceremony where they putting his body into the ground. He jumps out. He walks into the middle of the grass a little bit, ups the pistol that his brother left, and begins to banging at everybody that's right there in the crowd. <laughs> As he does that, everybody gets to scatter and scream and run in each and every direction. Now, Rel little homeboy, the one he trained, like I told y'all, he ducked off right there behind the tree. So what does he do? He up his pistol, get the moving behind the tree, looking. Now he see where the shot's coming from. He see the person that shot the shot. So now he slowly start creeping behind the tree, moving around towards the car. Now, where money and them homeboy messes up is he doesn't sprint and run back to the car. He think everybody is scattered and ran away and there's nobody there with that iron. So he begins to slowly pace back to his car. Before he gets in the car, open the door, Ralph little homeboy jumps from behind the tree and hit him four times in his body. <laughs> he lets off the shots in his gun. Put money in them little homeboy can jump in the car. He's hit about 13, 14 times. He drops right there, never even making it into his car. Ralph little shooter, the one that he was training that got into the shootout with money little homeboy. He breaks off, breaking into his car and shoots off into the scene, man. Damn. Fast forward about an hour when money and the homeboy get the news that their homeboy just been murdered at Ralph funeral. Both of them hit their knees, man, to begin to cry tears that nobody can stop. So now when Stacy hear that money out there crying because she's in the bathroom in the hotel, she comes out the bathroom and see money right there on his knees crying. She come right there and say, what's wrong? Money tells her that his homeboy just been murdered, man. They say he went up there and tried to shoot fucking Ralph funeral up, man. And somebody called him. That's what I'm saying. That's why I knew I should have been there. I knew I should have been there. So now he's slowly starting to go on off, blaming himself. And he kind of trying to blame Stacey. So she say, don't you do this. She grabs him by his chest and tell him, calm down. They embrace hug and they just console each other, both sitting right there crying, man. The other homeboy, he's sitting right there on his knees at his house. He going with a wave of emotions through his head thinking, man, did he fucking do that for me? Man, I should have never said it wasn't on him. I should have never said he ain't had no gun. Now he's starting to slowly torment himself because he like, did shorty go do this because I said he wasn't like that? Did he go do this because of what I said on the phone? I, I should have went up there and seen him. I should have did something. He's starting to blame himself, man. Now, after all this news, man, money, fast forward into that homeboy funeral. Money. And the other homeboy, they come together, throw the funeral for their homeboy. Everybody attend, everything. I mean, nothing goes wrong during the funeral because during this time, it had just been so much. Police are everywhere because now they didn't got involved thinking that this is a drug war, drug turf. They don't know what's going on because it's too many shootings and too many murders happening in this one radius, in this one neighborhood zone, man. So money and them attend their homeboy funeral, put them to rest. Money tells his other homeboy, listen, man, can't do it no more, bro. Man, Stacy moving to Arizona, man. Ray opened me a um, construction business. Homeboy say, I love you, bro, of course, man. It ain't need nothing here for us no more. Now, granted, Money and his homeboy, they sit right there as they embrace each other for the last time. They sit right there just looking, laughing because it's like, man, we done been at, it's been one hell of a ride, man. As they leave the funeral, the homeboy goes his way. Money and Stacy jump in the car. They shoot around the way to say bye to Money's mom, Money's father, Grandma Jane, the cousin. They jump on the highway, hit it to Arizona, man. And it was what it was. The way was never the same because police 
presence was so deadly because it was so it was too much violence and too many murders and shootings going on in that one neighborhood, man. So they ended up indicting the neighborhood, which means they had 24-7 police around there. They started putting blue light cameras on all the poles around there. So everybody from around that way had to relocate and go on to a new man. So y'all know what it is, man. Thank y'all for riding with me, man. And that was Gangsta Love, man. Part 8, the finale. Y'all already know what it is. We will be starting a new series tomorrow. But for the day, y'all know what it is. Let's jump into story number two. Now, y'all, this was a real crazy situation because this was the first time that I seen something halfway seen that I thought only happened on TV and it happened in real life to me. So now let's bounce to the joint real quick, y'all. Juvenile joint. So now during this time, I get books for a violation for real. Me and the box lady, the same one I told y'all that was trying to pop up on us when we was in the house getting drunk and all that when I was on the box. Box lady, me and her get into it. She all in her feelings. She ends up violating me. Yeah, y'all violate me. So, boom, I get a little 60-day hit. So, now, after my 60 days up, I'm ready to go to court to go ahead and get re, um, you know, see what they're going to do. Is they going to let me back home with a box or they going to cut the box off, whatever the case may be. So, now, I didn't already talk to the lawyer. He said he didn't talk to the box lady. She going to let me come back on a, uh, she going to let me come back home on a box as long as I comply. When it was her fault that all this happened, her just being in her emotions. Now, granted, I got one of my little homeboys. He over there booked with me, too, but he locked up for an attempt. Now, this is how the situation plays out with him. He on the streets banging on the grass. He goes to hit a little new dude that he met. The little dude tried to pull him a move. He had a joint on him. My little man had one as well. They get into an altercation. My little man ends up getting the best of the situation. The little dude don't die, but he end up in critical condition. So he was like a vegetable for probably like a month. His family ain't want to pull the cord. And it was a good thing that they didn't because after like 35 days, the little dude end up coming up out of it. But he was really, really messed up for life. So now they got a grudge against, of course, him. When granted, they don't really know the situation. That Shorty was trying to rob somebody and then things end up going left. And he end up getting the bad, uh, the bad end of the stick. So now is my little man over there fighting an attempt for real. He going back and forth to court to see what they going to do to him. Is they going to leave him as a juvenile or is they going to wave him up and charge him as an adult? Now, granted, he got a real, real good lawyer on the case and the lawyer fighting for him. So he keep getting them postponement at the postponement at the postponement. And it's a lot of things that go in the tech when you trying to wave a juvenile up to an adult. Like, is he violent? Is he aggressive? What is his criminal background? Has he already been you know, convicted of anything, how tall is he, how much do he weigh, what type of family do he got, it's a lot of different things that go into it, so now, boom, as he going through this whole process, the day that I'm ready to go home, uh, I'm ready to go to court and go home, he ready to go to court too to get a decision, I guess, on his case, so now, the way that it worked is, they would come grab everybody early that morning, probably like four or five in the morning, they would take us down to Four Hall, which is the intake center, Boom, bring us down there, swap us out like some dudes might want to get on a uh, church clothes, put on suits and ties, look good for the judge, get a fresh pair of glasses. You got Muslims wearing kufis that never did. It's a lot of little dope fan games they play. You got dudes in there trying to get, uh, they used to give us a little of these things called the daily breads and stuff like that. They want to go in the courtroom with them. They trying to run a whole bunch of scams, y'all. I'm telling you, it's crazy. So now, boom, they got us all in the bullpen. They shackle us up. Waiting for the transportation van to come. They load us up on the van. They shoot us to the courthouse. Now, depending on if you got morning court or afternoon court, it don't really matter because we all going to be down there until it's your time to go to court. So now when they brings us, when we arrive at the court building, they put us in the bullpen, something just like this. So in my bullpen, it's probably like me and 12 other dudes. Now, in his bullpen, they put him in the one next to me. It's probably like him and six other dudes. So me and him is sitting on the bars right here talking to each other. I'm like, sure, you good? Uh, he like, yeah. I'm like, man, what is looking like? You talk to your lawyer, what they talking about? He like, man, the lawyer says looking good for real, for real. I could possibly just stay as a juvenile and just get juvenile life, which means he would be locked up until he was 21. Then he would be released. So I'm like, all right, that's a bet, man. You know, I hope and pray you make out, shorty. He like, all right, that's a bet. So now they call his name. I never forget. Boom. They come right there. The bailiff come. He opens the door. Boom. He pull him out. You can hear the shackles of him going out, going up the steps. And he ready going to the courtroom. So now when he go into the courtroom, the little dude who he did that to, his family is in there. And my little man family in there with him too. So when my little man come into the courtroom, of course, he look back, see his family, speak to his peoples. Now he looks over, he can see the victim family sitting over there too. So as they going through the court here and the mother, I guess she had something she don't like. She start going off, she getting mad, but as she getting mad and zapping, she's so angry that tears coming down her face. So she start getting belligerent. So the sheriff that's sitting like, when you at the court table for real, when it's you versus the state, you gonna be right here, your lawyer, y'all gonna have a table. And then you gonna have the, uh, the DA and them over there. And there's gonna be two people over there that's at a table. And then it might be a sheriff right here and then a sheriff on the other side. And then in front of you is the judge and the people that be typing up and all that. So now, boom, as the sheriff leaves from right here to go check on the mother because she going crazy, 
the little victim dude, he got an older brother that's right there. As the mother got the bailiffs distracted, the brother jumps over the rail and boom. Now, when he jumped over the rail and he started beelining straight to the table that my little man and his lawyer at, the lawyer so scared, he jumps up, throw the chair, he jumped over the rail and going into the crowd. So, of course, when the big brother runs right there, my little man, he handcuffed up, so he really defenseless. Boom, he hit my man with a good one. My now, when he catch him, my little man falls out of the chair. He get to go to work on him. Ma, 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 ma. Now, as he doing that, the sheriff turn around. But my little man got an older brother right there, too. He jumps over the railing. When he jump over the railing, he hits the big brother of the victim family. Ma, what the fuck are my little brother? Now, by this time, though, when he make his move, both of the sheriffs done already left right there from talking to the mother. They whips out the taser, hit both of the brothers. When they hit both of them, they trying to pick my little man up because now y'all got to think. He property of the state, so his parents can really sue and try to file law suits and all that because y'all supposed to be paying attention and protecting my child while he in here in court and here juvenile so they definitely would have had a case boom so the family right there fighting the uh sheriffs and tase the people so they separate break everybody up the mother over there said get his ass that's exactly what he get now my my, my little man mother right there saying after the victim mother so the two ladies start walking towards each other they start fighting in the middle of the courtroom my, 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 my. of course you know they don't fight like men so they just swinging fists pulling people here so now the sheriff then gotta uh put these two dudes down they already got the two brother handcuffs they breaks through the law uh if y'all ever been to a courtroom you know it's like the table that sit behind you then you got the little swing door and it goes straight down the aisle then you got the rows of chairs so the mothers is fighting right there in the middle of the aisle so the sheriff swings the little uh wooden door open breaks right there tackles both of the women on the ground because he just like man at this point i'm tired everybody fighting y'all doing too much everybody ass is ready to go to jail Boom, so he tackles them, they fall to the ground. He don't tase them, no. He separates them. The women still right there trying to pull each other head, not let go. So the sheriff is in the middle of them. He tell the other sheriff, man, goddamn, help me. So the other sheriff, he's so sitting right there, memorized, watching this whole situation happen. He forget it's his damn job to be assisting in this situation. So boom, he snaps out of it. He start running, assist the other sheriff right there, hog ties them up, boom, separate them. He brings one of the mothers outside of the courtroom. He lead the other mother in there. Now, them two, they don't get locked up, even though they probably should have because they was going crazy. But you got to understand a mother's love. Now, when it comes to the two brothers, they ass is going down to the slammer. So this one sheriff that already got my uh, little man who already in custody up, takes him back down to the bullpen. Now, I cannot lie to y'all, man. When he get back down, when he left out, his face was regular. When he come back down to the bullpen, man, he got the pecan swirl. I, I cannot lie. Like, whatever that big brother threw at him with that right hand, it connected and he made it count. So, boom, he come back down. I'm going to tell you, man, man, the man, these, man, man these, I'm telling you, man, suckers. I'm like, bro, what the fuck happened, man? Bitch, ass brother came out there, man. Jumped over the rail. Going to sneak me, yo. Okay, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. My big brother out there worked him, though. Worked this bitch ass. And my mother and them was out there fighting. Yo, it got crazy up there, bro. I'm like, man, is you serious? He like, hell yeah. I'm like, yo, this is wild. Now, he down there going through all that, telling me the story about what happened. As me and him talking, guess who come downstairs 10 minutes later? Both of the big brothers. I'm talking about crazy situations, man, all over some nonsense that ain't had nothing to do with nobody. But when you in them courtrooms, emotions get to fly, man, it get crazy, y'all. But with that, man, as a matter of fact, let's jump in a part two and a half. Let's get it. So, man, during this time, I'm working at the little warehouse, right? Now, in this warehouse, for real, across the street was a real, real big little shopping center. It had a couple little stores in there, but it had this little bakery. I'm talking about, man, this bakery had some of the best cupcakes, some of the best strudels. They, they sold, like, pastries, coffees, and frat pigs and stuff like that. So, every day on break, I would go over there and grab me a cupcake or grab me a new little snack that they would put me on to. Now, one day I go over there, I'm working, I get done working, it's break time, I go 8 o'clock, I'll go to my break, I shoot over there to the shopping center. Now, I come into the store, the people in there know me by this time, because I come there, I come there damn near every day. So when I come in there, she like, be what you want, I tell her my order, she already know I want the regular two red velvet, two red velvet cupcakes and one uh, snickerdoodle cupcake. Boom, I step to the side, she ready to whip them up for me. Now, it's this white dude that come into the store. Now, granted, it's a white dude that's working the register as well. So when the white dude come in, he order his coffee. I never forget, it was like a large frat bag espresso type, something like that. Boom. So he puts the order in. The dude takes his order. He say, all right, give me about five minutes. He steps to the side. He over there standing with me. Now, when the dude come back with his coffee, he slide it to him. The dude, of course, here, uh, 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 here, uh, he a regular coffee drinker, so he sips it. Mm. When he sips it, he like, man, what the fuck is this? This is not what I ordered. So he showed it to the man. The man like, oh, well, excuse me, man. I'll take it. Man, God damn, how hard is it to make some fucking coffee? So the other, so the dude that's working there, he like, man, can you watch your mouth? Man, I just told you I'll fix it. Man, I'm fucking late for a meeting already, and you got, what the fuck? You don't know how to make coffee. Why are you working here? So now as he going off, mind y'all, the top is off the coffee. So as he like making hand movements, coffee is going on the dude. So he like, man, you spilling fucking coffee on me. So when he says that, the dude just throw it in his face. Like, man, 
down spilling coffee on you. So it's a lady right there working behind the register too. She said, sir, have you lost your mind? Now he, he, he probably only got about this much coffee left in the cup. He like throws it at her. Huh? Now I done lost my mind. Man, I guess the little white dude that worked back there, he done had enough. That was it. He jumps over that motherfucking counter, grab him by his shirt, and gets to crush him. I'm talking about as soon as he grab him, he go just like this. Take him in the air, sky born, drop him. Boom, man, they on the floor touching like he ain't stand over him and give him the mop. When he dropped him to the ground, I don't know why. He like fell to the ground with him. They right there rolling on the ground, but he was connected, hitting them all in his face. Ah, ma, 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 ma. I'm looking at these fools like, man, I don't even want the cupcakes at this point. But it's a little security guard, little like company that worked in the shopping center. They would always drive around. Thank God for these fools. One of the security guards was walking past on his break, smoking a cigarette. He see the stuff going on. He looks in the store, breaks in, and he was a little cocky dude too. He uh, he runs in there, break them up for real, separate them. Throws the dude who was uh, who threw the coffee in, throws him out, tell him get off the premises. He jump in his car, leave. I'm just sitting right there, looking confused, crazy, and I'm laughing, y'all. I'm not gonna lie. They come right there, give me my cupcakes. I shoot out there and go to work. Crazy situations, man. All over some coffee and and, and a miscommunication. But with that being said, y'all, let's jump into story number three. Now, man, story number three, this was a real wild one to me, y'all, because I ain't like the way this situation was, but I do like the way that the ending played out. So, boom. Now, we got these two group of homeboys. Now, granted, I'm from Baltimore, if y'all don't know, so we don't really get a lot of events where celebrities come to our town or they come to our city like that. So, now, whenever we do, it's a real big event to us because everybody want to go. All right, we got some celebrities down here, man. We really have a good time. The city really be lit. Y'all know how that go. So, during this time, all of the promoters in the city banded together for real. They put their money up. They book a couple celebrities they throwing a major day party in town so now of course the whole city get the buzz everybody want to go so we got these two group of homeboys now one of the homeboys for real he probably like 25 but he's full meaning no matter how old he was he could always call his parents and they would give him money and i'm not talking about 20 40 dollars i'm talking about 1500 2000 he had them type parents you get what i'm saying now he got a homeboy who ain't really have a support system like that so everything he got he worked for he ain't have a job so y'all already know what that mean everything he got he got about the curb. So now when the party day come, they wake up early in the morning. Lil' uh, Mr. Spoil, he calls his homeboy, man, what we doing? You know, such and such of them coming to town. We got cut up. Homeboy say, man, that's about what we gonna do. I probably only got enough money for the ticket because it's a day party and by the time I come out for real, I ain't gonna have enough to be able to bang out like I want to and make a couple dollars. They didn't call us off guard with this. So we like, man, we ain't getting no tickets. We ready to get a table. Now, granted, Mr. Spoil, he the type of dude that wears though. He want a section not because he actually likes a section and he want his privacy. He the type of dude that want a section because he want other people to think that he a baller. He want other people to think that he's special. He want people to look at him and be like, oh shit, man, bro got the table. They over there cutting. They got the Bibles, man. The bras over there. They over there doing it big. He like one of them plug guys. This is the way he wants to be looked at. He was an old phony baloney type dude. So now his homeboy like, man, why we can't just get a ticket, man? It's cheaper. I ain't really trying to be spending no money like that. I ain't really got it. Now his homeboy is being up front with him and honest telling him, look, Bro, I ain't really got money to blow like that, man. I'm still, I still gotta make sure I make my re up, and I still gotta make sure I take care of myself, whatever he need to take care. Of. So the friend like, man, I got you, but you mean no, we ain't doing no table. I mean, we ain't doing no tickets, man. We gotta get a section. You already know what it is, man. You know who gonna be in the building? Such and such and them from over west gonna be over here. Such and such from down east gonna be in there, man. We gotta cut up, man. What you wearing? I'm wearing the lambing. So now he goes in the sand with it, with uh, with his outfit is. I'm a wear the Murray's, bro. I'ma head a Cartier. I'ma head a glasses on. I'ma I'm I'm see if I can hold my brother Roly. He trying to put this major outfit together because he trying to stunt for the city. So the homeboy like, man, I just probably wear a little Under Armour outfit for real, for real. I just got. So he like, man, a little Under Armour outfit. So now he already trying to clown and make him feel down. Like, what you mean you ain't got enough money to go in for the table? And what you mean you wearing the Under Armour outfit? Now, granted, the only reason he's saying stuff like this is because he really be in the presence of other dudes who he feel as though getting money or other dudes who he feel as though is major figures. So he want to show off and he want his homeboy to be a show off too. But his homeboy telling him like, bro, I ain't got it like that. I'm not trying to show off for no another man. I just want to go to the party, see a couple females, enjoy the show, come back to the block. Yo, that's all I'm trying to do. No, but we're not doing that. Well, listen, I'm going to put up, I'm going to put your half up for the table, but you got to get a better outfit. So the homeboy tell him, man, I'm not getting no motherfucking new outfit. So I told you what it is. I'm going to call you later on, bro. I'm ready to go outside. They hangs up the phone. So boom, come later on that day when it's about time to go to the party because I told y'all it's a day party. So this set, 
The conversation happens early, early in the morning. Later on that day, they call each other again. Mr. Spool say, where you at, y'all? I'm ready to pull up. He say, I'm, at, I'm on my block. Boom. Mr. Spool pulls down on the block. He pick his homeboy up. They go get some liquor. They shoot to the, uh, to the day party. When they get down there, all of them get together. The rest of the homeboys, they pay for their table. They get in the section. Now, when they go to their section, they down there enjoying themselves. Everybody having a good time. He swinging a bottle around. Everybody pouring cups. Now, he see these group of females, of course. These group of females, they the type of girls where though whoever got a section, they going to bounce from section to section to see what group of uh, dudes is going to do the most for them. Like, they might go to one table, dude might give them a bottle. They might go to another section, dudes might give them cash. They might go to another section, dudes might give them flowers because dudes is trying to get at them and take them home. So they trying to pick and choose which one that they want to go home with, whoever give up the most of whatever they want. So when they get the little Mr. Spold in them table, he see the females walk by. So what does he do? He got one of them little Louis bag messages on. So he goes in his bag. He whip out probably like $2,500 that he got from his parents. Not money he didn't earn, not money he didn't hustle for, not money he didn't risk his freedom for, but money he didn't dial the phone and, and call his parents for, money that he was entitled enough to get. So he goes in his bag, whip out the money and start flashing it. What you know what it is? Real dope boys in here. Trap money, trap money. So he started yelling out all this nonsense that he had trap or trap money, dope boys on deck just because he's trying to impress the females. So of course, when they see this, I don't know, granted, and they hear it, if they feel it's like, oh, all right, here, clown, we ready to get him. He's trying to show us his money. Or they might have actually thought that he was a dope boy, trap boy, plug boy. So they comes up there to the table. They start introducing themselves, flirting, twerking all in front of the table. So he starts pouring a bottle right there. He doing his one too. So now all of the girls that's right there, it's probably about four of them. It's probably about three guys, the two homeboys and another dude. They all right there, cool and drinking, having a good time. Now when the day party over, the girls ask the dudes, man, what y'all ready to get into? Homeboys say, shit, we ready to go get a hotel for real, cool out for the day. Probably keep drinking and uh, smoke some weed. What y'all trying to do? Y'all coming through? Now the female's like, mm -hmm, hell yeah, I'm coming through. So what you trying to get a room for later on the night? Because what if I want to stay? So she trying to rock him to sleep, trying to throw it out there like, okay, you ready to have a hotel room for all of us? Or are you really getting money to wear as though if me and you want to duck off and get a room, can you afford two rooms? So, of course, him trying to be a big boss, man, he said, what you mean? I'm going to get a room for us if we need to get one. But if not, I just got the room for all of us to go chill up. And she say, all right, that's a bet. So they leaves out the day party, jump in the car. Now, as they jumping in the car, headed around to the uh, to go grab the hotel, she say she hungry. One of the girls yell out that she hungry. So now the homeboy say, all right, where y'all want to eat at? She say, I don't know, you treating? He say, yeah. So the first thing he say is he want to stop at a little fancy restaurant. The homeboy like, no, nah, bro, you can drop me off. So now the, the Mr. Spool is trying to put Put his homeboy on uh, uh, on notice, on highlight. He's trying to put him in positions the way as though he has to spend money, knowing that he don't have the money to spend. So that's going to have to ultimately make him say what? Bro, I can't go. I don't got the money. So he really trying to embarrass him in a little sneak way, in a, in a, in a, in a snaky way. So the homeboy like, man, just drop me off. No, what the fuck you trying to get dropped off for? Man, niggas getting money. You ready to get something to eat, man? What the fuck you want some broke shit? Man, you better tell him, man, we don't do no broke shit around here. Niggas getting money. So he keep going in this dumb Louis bag, showing off the money. So bro like, yo, stop playing with me. What you trying to embarrass me? He like, what you mean, man? You doing that to yourself, nigga? I'm getting money out here. You know what I'm doing. So now he's trying to play and act like it's the liquor that's taking control of him. He's trying to act like this not really him talking or he's not embarrassing his friend or showing off for these girls that he just met. Absolute strangers. He's trying to act like he drunk. Man, I ain't ready to go through all that, man. Don Julio and me, bro. I ain't ready to keep going back and forth with you. So, boom, when they get to the hotel room, the homeboy turn around and ask his friend what he got to the room. Of course, the homeboy say, man, I ain't got nothing to the room. I ain't say I was getting no hotel, bro. I told you, drop me up. God damn, broke niggas, man. So, now the homeboy that don't, that's not Mr. Spool, he get mad at being disrespected in this chump playing with him. He say, yo, say that shit one more time. Yo, I'm going to go in your fucking mouth. He say, what, that you a fucking broke boy? Shorty right there, just like he told him and warned him. If he said it one more time, he was going to go in his mouth. Shorty cracked him. Now, when he cracked him, Shorty falls straight to the ground. Money fall all in the air. So now the girl step back. Shorty, that that's that's not uh, Mr. Spool. He stands over him, grand by his shirt, hit him two more times. Dumb bitch. He just leaves him right there. He start hitting towards the door. When he start hitting towards the door, the two girls start following him. Where you ready to go at? Oh my God. Now, before they leave off, of course, they pick up the little couple dollars that he had uh, that when he got knocked out, fell in the air. They picks up the money, leave off. Guess what they do? They end up leaving with my man that was broke. He say, shit, y'all can come down my way with me for real. We ain't really got nothing going on, but we got we having a little cookout down there. The girl say, shit, we with it. We ain't gonna fuck with this clown ass anyway. He was doing too much. We just only was trying to get with him for the money. Message. They leave 
see him shoot down the block and they enjoy themselves. And Shorty end up getting with one and he put the other one on with one of his homeboys down his block. All because what? Shorty left in the, in the middle of the hotel lobby. Of course, they woke him up and he got himself together. About the next day, he woke up talking about he was drunk. This, that, and the third. His homeboy told him, I don't care, man. It was what it was. And I end up, we end up knocking one of him in. It was what it was. But y'all read between the lines, man. With that being said, family, thank y'all for riding with me. Well, you know if you have a lot, then with your boy stories with V. At this time, family, y'all already know what I need y'all to do for me. Like, share, comment, smash that subscribe button, y'all. We'll be at 100K in no time from V. But y'all, man, I love y'all from the bottom of my heart, man. It ain't no me without y'all. Make sure we continue to dominate this algorithm, man, by liking the video, commenting the video, sharing the video, and telling a friend to tell a friend. Rush over here and join that V-Mob, man, because y'all know the motto. It's V-Squad or no squad. And now mob, how we mob, man. Thank y'all. I love each and every one of y'all. Salute to the day one members. Salute to the new subscribers.